Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's August 3rd, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. Could the Democrats' next presidential candidate, Joe Biden, signal an intensifying drug war against the American population? Windows' latest release opens the door to the expanding spy state right under your nose. And Alex Jones continues his investigation into the falling European economy. I know you already know all this, but we need to get the word out to the general public because they're starting to wake up that there's a problem. They don't know what the solution is, and they're being sold that socialism and more collectivism and more wealth redistribution is the answer, not understanding the ultra, ultra, ultra rich are tax exempt. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Coming up later in our show, we'll have a special report from Alex Jones and also Rob Dew. They're over there in Europe. But first, let's talk about prohibition. You guys have probably seen the old movies with the documentaries about the gangsters, the moonshiners, these guys cooking the bathtub brew, and then they go out in the streets and they have these big shootouts. It was a horrible, violent time in American history. And eventually, people decided that alcohol prohibition probably wasn't the best idea. But the thing about it is, so many years later, we have repeated the same cycle where you see people cooking meth in their bathtubs or in their basements, or you see these shootouts, these horrible gangland-style massacres in places like Chicago. It's pretty much the same thing that happened way back when, but now that we call it the drug war, it's something that we can't drop, and it continues to happen to this day. Now, should we legalize drugs across the board? I'm not telling anybody to go shoot up heroin or take meth or anything like that, but things such as marijuana, I wouldn't so much have an issue with. But now we have this article from Kurt Nimmo, Joe Biden, the drug war presidential candidate. According to Politico, Biden is a beloved figure in the Democratic Party, a stand-up guy, and the Democrats want him in the wings if for some reason Clinton implodes. Biden has enabled the disastrous drug war and played a key role in militarizing law enforcement, including mandatory minimum sentences and the creation of a cabinet-level drug czar. So for all the reasons that I previous, previously mentioned, we have this huge disastrous drug war. You know, when you talk about these guys uh, bringing in the cocaine and all this, and they want to lock up some guys like Rick Ross, who definitely was guilty, but it comes to common sense. Rick Ross wasn't born rich. He couldn't afford planes and trains and automobiles to bring all this cocaine in. So how did it get here? Nobody wants to talk about that. And they talk about, oh, you talk about Gary Webb, that conspiracy theorist. Regardless of what happened to a Gary Webb, and I definitely respect his reporting, if you don't trust a word that Gary Webb had to say, you can go see the 60-minute report where Mike Wallace was talking to the head of the DEA, and Mike Wallace said, hold on, you're telling me that the CIA brought cocaine to this country, and the DEA guy's like, yeah, I don't know any other way to tell you, Mike. This stuff is going on. It's continuing to happen in this country, and this is why they have to have these, or why they say to you that they need these MRAPs and the assault rifles and the riot gear and all this stuff. And yes, there is a time and place. There are situations where you may need riot gear where a standard cruiser or a, a van may not be sufficient, but to have this stuff across the board, it definitely is not necessary. And let's talk about things that aren't necessary in the spin cycle. Planned Parenthood. You guys have probably seen these several videos that have come out over the past few weeks. Uh, Planned Parenthood has a, or excuse me, the organization who's targeting Planned Parenthood has a total of nine videos. I think they're on video four or five right now. And in the most bizarre turn of events, just, uh, I just can't believe they're going this route. They're saying that Planned Parenthood actually prevents abortions now. And now we have the spin cycle. We have the tweets from Planned Parenthood Republicans. And they're talking about how Republicans hate abortion. And they're trying to destroy a government program that helps prevent over 345,000 abortions a year. And anybody with any common sense points out that an organization claims it is pre preventing abortions while executing almost 400,000 abortions in 2013. So I'm very curious of how they even got this number, this uh, 345,000 number, because how do you really know how many abortions you uh, prevented? I mean, does somebody who come in there and, you know, get a bag of condoms come by and say, hey, I would have had an abortion if, you know, you didn't give me that, uh, that bag of condoms. I'm not exactly sure how they tabulate this, but I think it's just another load of bull. They're trying to ban these videos in states like California saying that 
you don't have a First Amendment right as a news organization to even present this to your viewing audience. It's completely ridiculous, and I uh, think that it's just a matter of time for Planned Parenthood. And when we're talking about a matter of time, it's time to fight for your privacy, because whether it's Edward Snowden or any other whistleblower, they're telling you that your privacy is at stake. And you may not care that, you know, people see your selfies or whatever until it's used against you in some type of way. And now we have Windows. They're spying on people. And the headline, don't spy on me, how to opt out of Windows 10 intrusive defaults. Windows 10's pre-installed settings are privacy intrusive by default. We will access, disclose, and preserve personal data, including your content such as emails and other private messages, when we have a good faith belief that doing so is necessary, and that is according to the privacy statement. And they do have a few tips for trying to combat this. If you take a look at the article, it has a few tips on there. Disable sharing of your internet connection over Wi-Fi, as well as many other things. But it's not just on your devices, devices, your big computers and all this. It's also on your phone. And how to combat this, we have a From the Vault report from Joe Biggs. <laughs> I'm Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. Now, here at InfoWars, we try to keep you, the viewer, and the people all around the world awake to the information going on. You know, over the past few years, Alex Jones has repeatedly told you and others here at InfoWars that the NSA is collecting your data. We have actual proof via my phone, my user agreement, where it says the NSA is taking my data and they're not responsible for any loss of data from my phone. This is mind blowing. I mean, like I said, we've known about it, but just to see it on your own personal phone that you went and bought at an AT&T store, just me buying this makes me agree to them spying on me. Just think about that. That's crazy. Not until you open up your own phone and put in your, uh, you know, your little password, you go to settings and it's right there. I mean, I was just like, wow. So it's not that hard. You put in your password, and then I don't know how it is for, uh, for Apple, but I have a Samsung Galaxy. All right, so you get your Android device, wherever your settings button is, click on that settings button. Go to general, scroll all the way down to the bottom to wherever it says about device, and you're going to go to legal information, open sources, licenses, Wait on that a little bit because there's quite a bit of information. You're going to go way down because that's how the NSA gets you. They want to hide the stuff way at the bottom. Okay, we're getting ready to come up on it. Here it is. All right, so system lib4 slash libselinux.so. Now we'll click on that. It says you are... You agree that this software is a non-commercially developed program that may contain bugs and the NSA makes no and hereby expressly uh, disclaims all warranties. It also goes on to say that the NSA will not be liable for any loss of profits or loss of data on your phone. Now what that is, is the NSA is using Linux to access your information on your phone. So this is something that they even have a Wikipedia about it is the Linux SE NSA spying program type deal. It's been available since 2003. So pretty much every phone since 2003 has been a spying tool for these NSA agents. Just think about that. Every phone you've had since 2003, the things you've done, seen, talked about, pictures you've shared, pictures you've taken. No wonder these celebrity you know, nude pictures are coming up because they're just out there. Anyone can get it. They don't need to steal your phone anymore. That's, that's child's play. They can just go in through these bugs, and it's right there. Proof. The NSA is spying on your phone. 2014 is 1984. Orwell was right. This handheld telescreen is spying on us right now and also giving us radiation while it sits in our pocket. So there you have it. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. <laughs> To some international news now, we're going to talk about Syria. And we have a report, U.S.-led strikes in Iraq and Syria killed hundreds of civilians, something we've been telling you all along. U.S.-led airstrikes targeting, targeting the Islamic State group in Iraq and Syria 
have likely killed at least at least 459 civilians over the past year, a report by an independent monitoring group said Monday. The coalition had no immediate comment. I'm sure they don't. And we see these reports from the Obama administration. Well, those numbers are too high. Well, I'm pretty sure your numbers are a little bit too low. They don't really want to tell you how many people they've actually killed, just like they reluctantly admitted that they killed people in the first place. At first, the, these things were just the most scientifically advanced, can't make a mistake. And then when the reports came out that they're blowing up wedding parties and blowing little kids' faces off, well, okay, yeah, we've we've uh, undoubtedly killed a few people. And then he came out and admitted, oh, yeah, U.S., we, we tortured a few people. We've tortured a few folks, I think was the quote that he had. So these things do happen, and people don't care until it comes home to them, just like people didn't care about depleted uranium in these other foreign countries until our troops started coming home with the depleted uranium diseases and making uh, sick children and all this. So you need to care about this stuff before it affects you in some type of negative way. And another thing, uh, talking about Obama here, you guys recall when Obama went to Africa and said that Africans shouldn't have air conditioning because the planet would boil over because of global warming. Now we have Obama will emit over 300,000 pounds of CO2 jet setting to Arctic to warn about global warning, warming. So this is what's going on. You know, he's hanging out with Bill Nye, the science guy. They're taking selfies on Air Force One and telling you, and I took this very personally from Bill Nye, the science guy, that the reason why we have floods and tornadoes in Oklahoma is because of global warming. Bill Nye, the science guy, as smart as you are, there have always been floods and tornadoes in the state of Oklahoma. Golly, made me want to cuss there. Now, I'm going to end on a very uh, sad note. We lost a great info warrior this past weekend, Rowdy Roddy Piper, the wrestler, the entertainer, the patriot. This guy, he came out, he used his celebrity in a very positive way. I've seen him in a commercial just recently talking about how we need to stop bullying campaigns and all types of other things. He's very well known for his role in They Live, a movie that woke a lot of people up. And when I'm talking about waking people up, take a look at this and see for yourself. We'll come back after this with more special reports. I feel like this all the time trying to politically awaken people that they're being lied to, that there's an agenda. It's not left or right. It's, hey, there's mind control going on. The signals broadcast 24 hours a day through all this media. Just become aware of it, and they'll say, there's nothing going on. And I want to say, put on these glasses or start chewing concrete. <laughs> have taken the hearts and minds of our leaders. They have recruited the rich and the powerful, and they have blinded us to the truth. The question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Our impulses are being redirected. We are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. An estimated 50 to 70 million Americans suffer from a sleep disorder or sleep deprivation. Outside the limit of our sight, feeding off us, perched on top of us from birth to death, are our owners. Latest census numbers prove the United States has the biggest gap between rich and poor compared to all westernized countries today. Our projections show that by the year 2025, not only America, but the entire planet will be under the protection and the dominion of this power alliance. The gains have been substantial, both for ourselves and for you, the human power elite. <laughs> and for the first time in all of human history, mankind is politically awakened. That's a total new reality. I've got one that can see. We can't be the only ones who can see. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate, sinister entity that's got at the root of all our problems. It's a new morning in America. Fresh, vital. The old cynicism is gone. We have faith in our leaders. We're optimistic as to what becomes of it all. It really boils down to our ability to accept. We don't need pessimism. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> and who are you, little fella? You will never see it coming. And I'm predicting the first guy who uses a Second Amendment weapon 
to bring a drone down that's been hovering over his house is going to be a folk hero in this country. Uh, nice. There is a signal broadcast every second of every day through our television sets. I'm just trying to warn you folks, the television is a giant LED weapon system. It's so advanced. They got a monkey farm in Bastrop, folks. They do all sorts of testing on great apes, rhesus monkeys, the whole nine yards. And they go, oh, you didn't see this, and punch a button, and it'd be hundreds of monkeys with wires in their brains with television sets brainwashing them. All I ever have to do is be famous. People watch me, and they love me. You can have a little taste of that good life, too. Now, I know you want it. Hell, everybody does. Do it to your own kind. What's the threat? We all sell out every day. Might as well be on the winning team. The real men of the world have to stand up and say, I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> Time to take a stand, boys. You know what? You got a little courage. Stand up for yourself. Waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones, coming to you live from the front lines. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. Well, pancaking almost like a precision implosion. It's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. And that's the principle of InfoWars life, as far as I understand, that you've always had, is that it's not about synthetic chemicals and forcing actions. It's about letting your body do its own thing and giving your body the tools it needs to create these different compounds that are super valuable and super beneficial. You will find Brain Force and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I wanted to bring Weldon Henson in here briefly because we have a great sponsor. And boy, I've sure been enjoying the firearms that I've gotten from them. HDfirearms.com. That's Head Down Firearms. They have super high quality 223s, 308, you name it. It's called 556, technically, in the 223, that are guns that would be $3,000 or $1,500. Guns that would be $1,500 or $900. Well, the important thing to remember is that if you're not in the market to buy a brand new rifle, you have an AR-15, you have an AR-10 platform 308 rifle. They've got everything you need to upgrade it. Buy a new part, buy a new trigger, buy a new muzzle brake, buy a new handrail. It's all an upgrade for your rifle because these are all superior top of the line quality products made in America. Tell folks uh, about their low profile series. Well, this is an important thing to have. This is untraceable. You, anybody can get this kit right here. You don't have to go through a, a federal firearms license place. Uh, you can have it shipped right to your house. This is what the traders have been trying to shut down. Absolutely. So you basically have everything you need besides a lower receiver because that's what's traceable, that's what's serialized, and that's what the, the federal government's after. But uh, you can get this right here. Get your own lower receiver any way you want. There's different programs. All you got to do is your own research, and you can find out how to get a lower receiver so that you can put it on this. Maybe you already have a lower receiver from an AR from way back that you just don't quite use anymore, it's old, something like that. You can throw it on this, you basically have a brand new rifle and you saved money by putting it together yourself and buying this kit right here, which is cheaper than the actual rifle. And they've got the highest quality barrels, the highest quality triggers. We're not just saying that, go look at the third party reviews, tell them about the new rifle they're producing that's getting amazing reviews. And then I just got one, this 308. Yes, that is very... Arcadius. Arcadius, that's very exciting. They just came out with their own line of um, AR-10 platforms, which is basically an AR-15, but instead of it being a 5.56, it shoots a 308 round, which I know you personally like shooting a 308. 
Um, I like them both. I mean, just to be clear, they've always for years been making this for the big manufacturers, the high end. They're just absolutely. now not private labeling. They're putting out their own guns. Yes. Well, the one they sent you, I'm actually jealous of. It's a beautiful gun. Um, it's set up and configured for long range shooting, marksmanship type things. Just the scope alone is something to <laughs> snuggle with. It, yeah, it's a Vortex 4x16 scope, which you can get it head down as well, their distributor. Um, and and I think things for people to remember is that if you want a 308, you don't have to get the 18 inch barrel, you don't have to get the 22 inch barrel, you don't have to get it set up for marksmanship. You can get one with a 16 inch barrel that's set up for more of an assault weapon type you know, uh, uh, configuration. So anything you want, people just call head down. You can get anything you want made there and any configuration you might want on your rifle. They're, they're able to do that and they have 100% perfect customer service ratings there. Bottom line, it's not just firearms, a ton of accessories, very affordable, and it supports the info war. If you're not shopping at hdfirearms.com, you're not helping the info war. I mean, this is a win-win. Thank you all for your support. Check them out today. Thank you, Weldon. <laughs>
uh, to bring in even more EU control and dissolve what local, regional, national sovereignty was left. So there's no check or no balance, no uh, separation of powers like we have in the United States on the EU dictatorship that has been set up. But here we are, the place where Julius Caesar was stabbed to death after he brought his troops in from the north, crossing the Rubicon, becoming a dictator. Uh, here we are uh, in the place where Mussolini, uh, the fascist leader, was hung up by his legs uh, and basically spit on by tens of thousands. Here we are in the capital city of Italy where so much of the fight for the globalist takeover is taking place. And we're going to be doing man on the street interviews. We're going to be uh, also traveling. I'm going to pick this out on a map, a random small town to go to uh, in Italy, separate from Rome itself, to try to get a flavor of just exactly what's happening there. And so many people who are ignorant politically, not really our audience, but folks I see on YouTube, people commenting on InfoWars say, you know, why do we care about Europe? Well, that's like saying, why do you care if the stock market crashes? Well, I don't own stock. I don't care. Well, if the stock market crashes, then most businesses will, will crash, then you'll be laid off. Or if you own your own shop or business, people won't have money to come in and buy from it. I mean, I know real business owners, people in the real economy know this, but so many smart mouths out there say, why do we care if China collapses with the stock market? Why do we care if, if, if Europe collapses? There's, you know, there's kind of this sick idea that I've seen out there that when somebody else does bad, we do good. No, no, that's not how trade works, especially when we've been globalized. When, when another nation does bad, we do bad as well. And that's what Ron Paul always talks about. It's time to stop fighting. It's time to stop having this wartime-based economy and get onto a free market economy. But the globalists don't want that. They're on record wanting managed crony economies where they control who gets the business, they control who gets the contracts. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Vote for Jeb, or you're just fucking stupid. Fool me, we can't get fooled again. Jakari Jackson here. Now I've done a lot of reports about firearms, and a lot of things that we hear about is reasonable gun control. We need uh, reasonable gun control, reasonable limits on our magazines, reasonable types of firearms, and we'll talk about all that here in a second. But now reasonable has gone to cartoon level absurdity. As we see this, the hashtag to disarm the iPhone. This little revolver was just too much for some people to handle, and now they want to ban it. And if you look over here on this screen, Android also has gun emojis, but if you send somebody a revolver via your iPhone, they're going to get this little black powder pistol, which here in the state of Texas is 100% legal. And we also saw something our photographer pointed out. This is a tweet from Nick Moons, who called it back in 2013, wondering if the government was going to take away their gun emojis because it makes some people want to shoot up places. I'm sure there's a bit of sarcasm in there because I don't think anybody looks at a little gun emoji and goes on a shooting spree. But good luck to you, Nick Moons, for calling this thing way out in advance. Like I said, it's not so much the government behind this campaign, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did put some steam behind it. Now let's look at a thing that a little revolver can do. It can defend your family. As we see here, a woman shoots an intruder five times because he broke into her home. So she pulled out her 38 revolver in the state of Georgia and shot the perpetrator you see on your screen five times. And that brings up another issue when we talk about firearms because guns have been so glamorized in the media. You watch, you know, Rambo or James Bond, and Bond pulls out a little micro pistol, shoots somebody, you know, 200 yards away, and the guy falls down. It doesn't really happen like that in real life. So you may need more than one or two shots in your pistol. You may need more than five shots in your rifle. And to anybody who says, well, I have no issue with the revolvers. It's the AK-47s and the AR-15s that keep me awake at night. Let's take a look at last night's nightly news with Darren McBreen the place and he successfully defended both his business and his life in the process rami mirror owner of a milwaukee based clothing store posted video of the encounter to the company's instagram account with a stark warning to any other potential burglars don't come to our establishment with guns or try breaking in our stores and expect less than us defending ourselves we will protect our business and employees at any cost. 
And check this video out again. You can see in the video how the criminals used a car to smash into the, the doors so the robbers could get in, but they are quickly met with resistance. The owner managed to hit one of the guys as they ran the hell out of there. And they ran, and they ran out of there in a pretty big hurry. So again, that's why you may need something like an AR-15. The shop owner was able to engage the guys at a comfortable distance. He had a big open store and enough room to reach out and touch somebody because as formidable as something as a revolver can be in a pressure situation, you may want something with a little more accuracy at that range like a AR-15. And to anybody who's concerned, this is a empty revolver. There's nothing in it. So you can save your little Twitter comments. But as we come to a close, I just want to point out to people that when we talk about firearms, at least when we talk about AR-15s, you can look down here, this is the FBI crime statistics, and you see knives and cutting instruments. We look at 1,490 deaths from those back in 2013, and then we look at the rifle, which had 285 deaths, which is to say you are much more likely to be stabbed to death than you are to be shot with an AR-15 or AK-47. And also to anybody who wants to ban the gun emoji, you might consider these things as well. The butcher knife, the bomb, the cigarette, and the needle. You can find more reports on InfoWars.com. Three members of the extensive Bin Laden family, Osama's stepmother, half-sister, and her husband suspiciously died in a plane crash on Friday. The Saudi-owned Embraer Phenom 300 private jet crashed into a British car auction lot on the edge of the Blackbush Airport in Hampshire, England, wiping out roughly 30 cars and killing everyone on board, including the Jordanian pilot. A pilot who frequently uses the airstrip questions the probability of the crash. Simon Moores said a plane of that caliber would be equipped with top-of-the-range safety functions, which should have worked to prevent the crash. He explained that the airplane, which traveled to the UK from Milan, only needs around 800 meters to land, but overshot the Blackbush airstrip measuring 1,300 meters. Moores said, why? If the pilot thought his angle was completely wrong, which is what happened in this case, why didn't he power up the engines to simply go around and try again? King Salman of Saudi Arabia offered his condolences to the Bin Laden family and then cut short his controversial planned three-week vacation on the French Riviera as his entourage of a thousand vacated the public beach they had sealed off, causing an uproar in France that produced a petition signed by 100,000 people against the closure of the public beach. Rescue workers pushed people away from the scene. Since the early days after the September 11th attacks, when the news emerged that most of the airline hijackers came from Saudi Arabia, dark allegations have lingered about official Saudi ties to the terrorists. Fueling the suspicions, 28 still classified pages in a congressional inquiry on 9-11 that raised questions about Saudi financial support to the hijackers and the United States prior to the attacks. Both the administrations of George W. Bush and Barack Obama have refused to declassify the pages on grounds of national security. But critics, including members of Congress who have read the pages in the tightly guarded underground room in the Capitol where they are held, say national security has nothing to do with it. U.S. officials they charge are trying to hide the double game that Saudi Arabia has long played with Washington as both a close ally and petri dish for the world's most toxic brand of Islamic extremism. President Bush, he is the one that when they came out with the 9-11 report, the administration reviewed it, and the Bush administration said, no, the 28 pages in this report must be classified. I have read the classified pages, and many of my colleagues have as well, the 28 pages. There is nothing, Alex, in here about national security. If it was, I would not be on your show. I would not introduce this resolution with two other members of the House. What we're asking people around this country, think about the pain of the 9-11 families, and think about you, the American citizen. Don't you have a right to know the truth about who was behind 
Back in 1988, Osama's older brother, Salam bin Laden, died in a plane crash in San Antonio, plummeting into power lines after the aircraft he was piloting tilted forward. Salam had been the patriarch of the bin Laden family empire after his father's death and may have been too big an obstacle for Osama's future plans that would later become the catalyst the globalists required to slowly dissolve American liberties. John Bound for Infowars.com. Well, if you want to see the UN's climate agenda at work, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency is going to be spending a million and a half of your taxpayer dollars on a stove intervention in Africa. That's right. Those pesky wood-burning stoves that humans have been using for centuries have now come under scrutiny due to the carbon emissions from when Africans cook. Some 200 houses in the Sahel region of Africa will be randomly selected, some families will be given improved cook stoves, and then they're going to study and assess the use and behaviors of the emissions for the next year. The EPA grant argues that this project is necessary because the population in this region is projected to continue to grow at alarming rates, which will result in ever-increasing emissions from cooking and lighting. If everybody's raising living standards to the point where everybody's got a car and everybody's got air conditioning and everybody's got a big house, uh, well, the planet will boil over. The Obama administration kicked off a massive campaign today to cut carbon dioxide emissions. This climate campaign includes a trip to the Alaskan Arctic by President Barack Obama. He's going to call attention to the effects of global warming. Ironically, his trip will emit tons of carbon dioxide, 161 metric tons for just that one leg of the flight, or about 354,585 pounds of carbon dioxide. That's equivalent to what 22 homes emit from burning electricity every year, or the annual emissions from driving 33 cars, or 33 African families cooking for a year. Now obviously there are health risks associated with smoke inhalation that comes from cooking indoors, but there are several companies that are already actively working to improve the way cooking is done in the developing world. But just look at the hypocrisy of President Obama's unnecessary trip to the Arctic. Unless he is giving his speech on top of a melting ice cap, there is absolutely no reason for him to go there while he's lecturing the world on climate change. Throughout its four and a half billion year lifespan, the Earth has gone through tremendous changes. Who knew we were just waiting for his Lord and Savior, Barack Obama's climate plan to fix everything. And our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. You know where they are down there, maybe? We have no yeah, idea where they are. Roger that. We can't even find them. So we're going to go look for them and ask them a few questions about why they like gun control, why they like statistically more deaths, and why they like Mexico. So, But we're trying. We can't even find them anywhere. Are you the head of the local organization? No, I'm not. I'm the head of the local organization. Hey, how you doing? I'm Alex Jones. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good, good. Yeah. So so tell us tell us about what you're doing here today. Well, I'm, is this, I would prefer to, um, to have just a moment to talk to you off camera before we, you know, you bring your cameras in to our event. Is that okay? Well, he's, he's just right there. No, I he's on. It's, it's just First Amendment. You're a public group. We're just wondering. I thought this was to raise awareness. If crime rates have dropped 49% since 1992 yes. because of gun ownership increasing, why we want to be like Mexico, where they've taken all the guns, they have the highest crime rate in the world, or Chicago. Okay, I'm not going to stand here and be bullied by you into having a conversation that you know, um, is Mr. not... Whoa, whoa, no, whoa you just, whoa, your hand. she just yes. rammed into me. I know, I came over to ask you to please... Wow, you just, that, that's like oh, assault. Yes, yeah, is it? Is this a public event? Why did you touch me? Because you I don't like you. You don't like me? No. Why? Why did you leave her alone? We're having a peaceful time here. Well, I just don't Your want anybody time. to touch me. You already slammed into me. You're not going to touch me, are you, sir? Go away. We don't want you here. We don't want you. What, what's wrong? We were so friendly. Public event is this. We don't want any exposure. We thought you wanted press. We're press. We're here to be friends. Okay, rally go. It went really well. We're going to have more of them. We're going to take our civil rights back. You're taking your civil rights? Just like in 1776. Who took, your, who took your civil rights? They've taken the guns in Chicago, New York, D.C. They're uh, taking your guns? Feinstein says the goal is to ban all the guns. It says right here. Nobody's trying to take your toys. They haven't, they haven't taken the guns. Ban assault weapons. Ban assault weapons. They're not trying. Says right here. Wait, wait, wait. That's all semi-auto. Shut up and let me talk. Oh, yes, ma'am. You are not. 
You are not saying that correctly. We want to ban, she wants to ban assault Who's weapons she? in the, Diane Feinstein, you're the one that brought her up. But, but Bloomberg wants a total ban. Wait, 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 wait. But they don't want to confiscate have they people that are. Did they confiscate guns in New Orleans? They say there are no orders to use force, just strong persuasion. Sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn and instructions to disarm anyone inside. You say guns guns will be taken? Yeah, no one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. Have they banned the guns in Chicago and New York and D.C.? No, they have not. Mayor Bloomberg, how you doing? Jason, I grew up in Brooklyn. In the spirit of gun control, will you disarm your entire security team? Uh, you will think, get right back to you. You'll get back to me? They have not banned the guns. You do not want our guns. That's, that's, well, good. We want your gun. Good. We so, don't want you here. Santa Ana wanted the guns. In reality and statistics, you're very upset. We're very sorry that no. we brought facts and reality. What about the 49% drop in violent crime since 1992 because of gun ownership don't going up? Me. I'm a libertarian. I shake my hand. Come on. Want a hug? How about a hug? How about a hug? Come on. Come on. I support. Yeah, here, here. We're being nice about this whole thing. Yeah, how about be friends? Here. What's your name? Matt. Matt. Yeah. Matt. Listen, you know Hitler was for gun control. It's going to be 1776 again, isn't it? Well, like 1776? well, we're trying to avert. The we're, conversation, we're trying to avert 1776. Once you bring up Hitler, you're obviously not serious about the conversation. Oh, no, but Lenin, Lenin and Stalin Lenin, and Mao, Stalin, Hitler, it's just, Santa Ana, they all came to take the guns. Yeah, Governments like, don't try to take the guns. Uh -huh. Well, here's like people that like gun control had, ban them all in like Chicago, New York, and D.C. So, so why wouldn't we think that there's really a plan to register them and take them if they've taken them other places? Real question. Why do you assume I'm for that? Uh, no, no, but I'm saying the bills they're trying to move forward. The mayor pro team of Austin we're, we're said, sorry. once we register your guns, we will confiscate them. That there is no gun ban currently, but because of the work that we're doing here today, we will make your side legitimate shortly. So you hang on to that. You may be one of the more moderate members, but that's the point. It says. It says ban assault weapons, which is even semi-automatic, and ammunition magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. This is this is a Bloomberg. You guys don't take money from Bloomberg. No money from Bloomberg. Your rally that you think was so successful, it's just so well accepted in Texas, it's not accepted nationwide. And that'll be used to get guns other places. I know, but here's the deal. We are desensitizing people, just like you guys say. The Attorney General said we've got to brainwash people that guns can't even be seen. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. So we're not brainwashing, we're reversing. We're openly saying, look, we have a right to own guns. I don't want people walking around with assault rifles on their backs, walking into Walmart, Starbucks. I, we don't need But that. you like cops with guns everywhere. Yes, I Can want I the cops your to question? have guns. Here's the deal, yes. we're going to have the guns everywhere and if you guys try to take them, I don't 1776. Want the <laughs> you know what a gun grab is? It's something that nobody in this country wants. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. A gun grab is something that nobody in this country well, wants. Well, sir, all I can say is you are really getting in my space, like your wife come over and push up against well, me. Why don't you back up? No, I'm not going to back up. Good. You're the one got in my space. You know Look what? at this. Look at this guy. Stop. All right, go ahead. Stop. You, you, Stop. Listen, I don't want to beat an old guy up, so don't touch me, all right? This guy could take just... you out in a heart. I bet he could. Scared. I'm not violent. Why do you think it's okay to sell a gun to someone that you don't know that's not been through a background check? Should we have a, should we have a background check for bathtubs every time we take a bath? We should have a background oh. check for guns. Should we have a background check for knives? You don't believe in a background okay, check? No. Have you heard about We all know it's a killer. registration. We have your documents. Have you read the bill 1565 that says it's against the law to keep a registration and it's a $15,000 But they've fine caught them keeping it. Sell a gun? They've caught them keeping it. I what do you think about myself. knives? I mean, there's Ronnie, a knife sweetheart. assault. You're giving them what they want. Don't do it anymore. Listen, don't listen to the facts, don't listen to the statistics. Just yell at us and well, call us names. That's the, that the only thing that works. Did you know assault rifles are using 2% of crimes? I know an assault rifle was used to murder my daughter in Aurora. I know that. Well, I'm sorry that... Yeah, you're, you're sorry. Not. I didn't catch no, your daughter. I mean, that's the big issue is there's probably five people here against the guns. And they're, and they're claiming, it's probably true, there's a guy with a lot of sadness in his eyes, that it's his loved one that was lost at Aurora 
and that that's basically our fault. And the, and the media is preying on these victims of gun control and gun-free zones like movie theaters, schools, and military bases, where the SWAT team was ordered to stand down at the Naval Yard. They are preying on us, and they're preying on people that have had loved ones that are lost in our pain to then blame others that have the right to self-defense when overall in the aggregate, guns are saving more lives than they're losing by 40 plus percent to one. If you look at just, just 20 years ago, it was 20 plus times a gun was used to stop crime or murder. Now it's 40 plus times on average. And so I'm like, here's the average. I'm sorry bad stuff happens. It's like cars. God forbid my daughter die in a car wreck. I'm not gonna then go out, uh, if it's a drunk driver, then I'm gonna blame him. I'm not gonna blame Ford or Chevy. These people don't get, they've lost. We know who they are. We're the liberals. Thomas Jefferson's a liberal.